We spoke to Suzette Davenport, Tispol's UK council member, about how police should not only react to, but also reflect on, an unforeseen and unfortunate spate of fatal collisions. Our Police and Crime Commissioner, uh, he has a uh, police and crime plan and is one of the few, if not the only, commissioner in the country to have identified what we describe as safe and social driving as one of the key elements of his plan. Part and parcel of that, and you would expect, I think, uh, James, is that the fatal four feature in that. Uh, and as you know, two, three weekends ago, uh, Gloucestershire had a very difficult weekend where we had three fatalities and two RTCs, which resulted in life-changing injuries for the, the people involved. Uh, I start, as you would expect, by again expressing my sincere condolences to the families. Absolutely tragic. And one of the really disappointing things for me is for all but one of those collisions, then it was avoidable. So the things I talk about in the Fatal Four, which is drugs, alcohol, distraction, including mobile phones, uh, speeding, uh, all things that if people do those things, then they're more likely to be involved in an RTC. Uh, and one of the RTCs in particular, where you've got uh, half a dozen youngsters all packed into a little car. Uh, it would appear that the uh, young gentleman who's lost his life was sitting on the knee of the front seat passenger, no seat belt, and we believe that alcohol was consumed by all of them, including the driver. So when you go back to the fatal four, we've got somebody distracted, lots of people in the car, we've got somebody who's been drinking alcohol, and we've got no seat belt, so you've got three of the factors there. So, you know, huge sympathies to the, the family, but what a tragic waste, and from my perspective, eminently avoidable. We asked Suzette about the sort of pressure it puts on the police when so many collisions occur in such a short space of time, and what impact it might have on individual officers. Well, I, I happened to be working half nights on the Saturday night, so I went to one of those fatal RTCs myself, um, and, you know, uh, lots of police activity, so lots of resources, uh, I, w I was actually with an officer, it was his, I think it was his 10th patrol day and his job, and his tutor did a very good job with him on the way to the scene, we were walking uh, in Cheltenham Town Centre, did a very good job of telling him these are the things that we need to do, secure the scene, identify the witnesses, all of that sort of thing. And he was trying to deal with the sister of the young lady who was tragically killed in that RTC. And, um, the impact on him of all that raw emotion and desperation from the sister who wanted to get to her sister and couldn't because clearly they were doing the very best. Uh, and unfortunately that weekend, the officers who were, you know, absolutely professional, committed, they did their utmost uh, over that weekend. Sadly, the same shift went to three of those incidents. And the impact that that has on the individuals is huge because they've got, you know, friends, families, you know, uh, sons and daughters themselves, and we're, we're not automatons, you know, they take away the emotion of all of that that they've had to deal with. So a huge impact, and we, you know, we do as much as we can to help support and manage the families, but also our staff who are dealing with this stuff day in, day out. But the really difficult thing for me, as I say, James, is that often this is eminently avoidable. And it's that that continues to both irritate and frustrate me.